Uh, thank you. We're very excited to do this webinar on this topic of EMC. And as always, please ask a ton of questions uh, since we have an EMC expert with us today, Ignacio, to address those questions, um, you know, take advantage of this opportunity. So that's my two cents. Uh, with Thank that, we can get started. Yeah, absolutely. With that, we'll get started. If you don't know who CR Circuits is, we're a Silicon Valley, Bay Area, PCB and assembly manufacturer. So we have uh, good technical capabilities to build all types of boards, as well as building standard boards on a quick cycle time. That's like who we are. And we've been doing that for quite some time now. And so this is the TOC for today. And we'll definitely talk about materials, material selections, and some, you know, pointers on design as well. And we'll end with a, a quick uh, checklist uh, for uh, EMC and DFM. So first, let's discuss the materials. Uh, you want materials with very consistent decay and dielectric thicknesses. So when these properties vary, they can cause impedance mismatches across the board. Um, so that's something that you wanna take into consideration. It's very important. You also wanna look at the thermal expansion of the material or the CTE. And having a high CTE uh, can definitely cause issues both with the reliability of the board as well as the performance of the board. Um, so you have to be very careful with the CTEs. In terms of dissipation factor or DF, materials with a high DF tend to lose more energy as heat during signal transmission, which is not only introduces insertion loss, but also increases the EM radiation. And finally, another consideration when you're choosing a material is moisture absorption. High moisture uh, content in the PCB can alter the electrical properties such as loss tangent, electrical conductivity, insulation resistance, uh, you know, and it can basically result into shorts. So from a fabricator standpoint, uh, prior to shipping, they should, the PCB manufacturer should bake the boards to make sure there's no moisture within the boards, especially important for rigid flex. And you might want to consider packaging in a vacuum type of a situation uh, and using a little bit more expensive packaging and uh, to make sure that there's no moisture uh, issue over time. So in terms of picking the materials, here are some examples. Uh, there's plenty of different material options. We have a material selector on our website. We won't demo that today. We have other tools to demo, but you can always pick materials that uh, with a DK of less than four. And here are some examples, FR408HR, which is popular in the automotive space, um, iSpeed, Tachyon. These are all uh, good choices to help minimize the signal loss and maintain impedance consistency. And for materials with a DF of less than 0 0.005, you have options as listed below, uh, Rogers and Megtron. Megtron is easier to uh, build HDI boards with or laser drilled microvias with sequential lamination, whereas a Rogers is less conducive to that type of a stack up. So there are trade-offs, not just from electrical properties, but from the manufacturability of the materials. And when, when we talk about hybrid stack ups, that's really important. Understanding what your VIA stacks are, of course, plays a role in how you build it and what material you've picked will either make it more challenging for the fabricator or easier uh, for the fabricator. So all very important. Uh, so when you're building a reliable stack up, there are things that you can do for manufacturability as well as electrical performance. And so here we've listed some of the things.
So one thing is that if you have the ability to surround your signal layers with ground and power planes, that would be a really nice uh, ideal situation. Uh, sometimes you don't always have that choice, uh, but you definitely want a symmetrical stack up uh, where your ground and power planes, however they're positioned within the stack up are evenly distributed. And in order to minimize uh, EMC and crosstalk, you want to follow some rules uh, on the dielectric uh, spacing, which are listed here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to switch uh, to a demo if that's okay for Vandana to do a stack up demo, and I'll come back to my slides at that point. Hi, everyone. Uh, our, PCB, uh, our PCB stack up designer tool provides manufacturable and cost optimized stack ups and also includes an impedance calculator. Uh, the tool allows you to change the signal pin combination and the copper weights in the generated stack up. It also allows you to download the stack up data in IPC standard 2581. Uh, first, you need to enter the board information here. Let's go with the project name, a revision number, the PCB size, and use the drop down here to choose the PCB thickness. Uh, same for the material. Uh, you can use this material selector compare guide. Uh, to view the data sheets of various materials and compare their attributes. Uh, once you have the board information, you need to choose one of the listed design approaches in the stack of design se uh, section here. Uh, you can choose the first option if you know the number of layers required in your design, or if you have a complex BGA that dictates the number of signal plane lay uh, layers in your board, then choose the second option. Let's go with option one for now and choose a layer count. Choose a signal plane layer combination and click on Run Stack Up Designer. You will be presented with the Sierra Circuit's recommended stack ups. This table gives uh, the stack up information like the signal plane layers, total number of layers, standard or HDI, sequential lamination, technology level, and cost index. Uh, you can click on this report page, uh, report button here to view the final stack up that resembles your final build up. Uh, once you click the button here on the report page, you can view the attributes without going back to the previous page. And if you do any changes to your uh, board properties here, then you have make sure that you click on this generate custom stack up button so that you update it. Scrolling down further, you can see a detailed construction of the chosen stack up. Uh, and on, uh, you can, uh, you, it provides the information on the material layer type, copper percentage, etc. Uh, here you can also change the layer type. For example, from a uh, plane, I can make it to signal or mixed and the copper percentage is also automatically adjusted here. Uh, next, you can scroll down and we have the built-in impedance calculator. Uh, this will allow you to add controlled impedance and compute the trace width and trace spacing for a target impedance. To add the impedance, uh, you click on this plus sign here. Uh, and you have a fresh line uh, added to the impedance table. Here, you can add the signal layer using the drop down, the target impedance uh, model type. Let's go with single ended. Uh, select a reference layer. The transmission line model is also automatically selected here, and you can click on calculate. Uh, the trace width and the calculated impedances are displayed over here, and you click on view. And the impedance calculator will be open where you can see the detailed calculations and you can also maybe see the other parameters and uh, go ahead with that. You can add in more impedance rows over here and uh, calculate the impedances. Further down, you have the technology parameters and the cost index. Uh, click on this save button and uh, uh, it will generate a ID that allows you to access the stack up in the next login session. And if you click on export to IPC 2581, uh, the uh, stack up data is imported in a .xml file, which can be implemented to any ECAT tool, which supports IPC 2581. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Vandana.